And if you're involved in anything that I'm about ready to tell you, then you need to tell me, okay? Um, your mom's dead, okay? Now, what I want to ask you is your, your, mom's, your mom's passed away, okay? And she's deceased, all right? Now, what I want to ask you, did you have involvement in this? Okay. Just, no. Hang on, hang on, listen to me for just a second, okay? This is the case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Gypsy Rose Blanchard was born July 27, 1991 in Golden Meadow, Louisiana, to Rod and Claudine Dee Dee Blanchard. We'll just call her Dee Dee. Rod and 23-year-old Dee Dee would separate during the pregnancy. He was just 17, in over his head, and felt he was married for the wrong reasons. When Gypsy was just one years old, her mother would claim that she suffered from sleep apnea, a condition in which breathing stops or slows for short periods of time while sleeping. By the time she was eight years old, Dee Dee had somehow convinced doctors that Gypsy had leukemia, muscular dystrophy, and many, many other conditions. These conditions would leave Gypsy bound to a wheelchair. Dee Dee was even able to talk doctors into surgically inserting a feeding tube into Gypsy's stomach. This is the first memory of surgery Gypsy would recall. She eventually went through multiple surgeries on her eyes, removal of salivary glands, and likely a combination of the effects of these procedures and medication, Gypsy's teeth would rot and require to be extracted. She really was molded into her role. It turns out that the litany of medications that she was giving the young girl were actually producing the symptoms that the doctors were trying to treat. They would go from local doctor to local doctor and Dee Dee would manipulate each one of them into treating different ailments. Hey, make it out of the yard. <laughs> so where are you going today? I'm going to Children's Mercy Hospital to see my dentist. For my and we'll be back. And we'll be back soon. Not yet. <laughs> Many times, doctors' reports would contradict what Dee Dee was trying to push. They would just go to a new doctor. And in the end, nothing would come of it. Things would continue to progress. She would shave Gypsy's head to keep up the facade of cancer and other illnesses and would be by her side almost every moment of the young girl's life. She was forced to be homeschooled by the second grade at the latest. She was under her mother's sole control. Some say this is a classic case of Munchausen by proxy syndrome, and some would say that Dee Dee was simply a con artist and a master manipulator. The truth likely lies somewhere in between, but the fact is this. Nothing was wrong with Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Well, nothing that wasn't created by her mother. She made sure that Gypsy relied on her and needed her. Like many families, in August of 1995, Hurricane Katrina displaced the Blanchards. They would relocate to Springfield, Missouri, and due to the family's quasi-celebrity, would have a home built for them by the Habitat for Humanity. That wouldn't be all. Over the years, they would receive celebrity donations, Gypsy would meet her favorite actors, and even take all-expense-paid trips to places like Disney World. Hi, In addition, Dee Dee claimed that all of Gypsy's medical records were destroyed in the storm, which allowed her to essentially create whatever ailments she desired. Moving out of Louisiana would also remove Gypsy's father from the equation and really eliminate anyone that might ask any questions. Things would go on like this for years. As Gypsy got older, the world outside of the bubble with her mother would start to beckon her. She would create secret social media profiles and start to communicate with other people. One of those people was 23-year-old Nicholas Godijan of Big Bend, Wisconsin. They started talking sometime in 2012. This would make Gypsy 20 or 21. I believe she thought she was 14 or 15. At least that's what her mother told her. She didn't even know her own age. In fact, when her father Rod attempted to call her for her 18th birthday, Dee Dee turned him away and told him that it was best if she didn't know she was 18 and that the doctors all agreed. What? Anyways, back to Nicholas. Well, he had his own issues, except his were not created by his parents. He was autistic, he had Asperger's, and was self-diagnosed with multiple personality disorder. The two would talk in secret on a nightly basis. They would even role play. Nicholas would show a darker side when it came to his kinks. And by the fall of 2014, Gypsy would tell her friend about Godijan and that she planned to run away and start a family with him. And by March of 2015, she and Godijan finally met in person. During a local screening of Cinderella, Nicholas would be in the theater and act as if they were meeting for the first time. If their plan was for him to charm Dee Dee and then she would allow them to be together, it didn't work. Dee Dee wanted nothing to do with Godijan. The two were, however, somehow able to sneak away into the bathroom at the movie theater and have sex for the first time. Nicholas would return home to Wisconsin and things would go back to normal. Well, whatever normal is for the Blanchards. Over the next two months, a plan would hatch between Gypsy and Nicholas. A plan that would free her from her chains and allow the two to run away together. That plan was to kill Dee Dee Blanchard. 
In the late hours of June 9, 2015, Nicholas would arrive at the Blanchard house to a waiting gypsy. She would hand him gloves and a knife and at the orders of Nicholas, lock herself in the bathroom. Nicholas would then enter Dee Dee's bedroom and proceed to savagely stab and slash her. Dee Dee would not survive the attack. The two would then flee the scene, take a taxi to a motel, and presumably start their lives together. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> They would end up back in Go to John's Wisconsin home, and some pretty serious stuff would be posted on Gypsy and Dee Dee's shared Facebook page. It wasn't long before police were able to trace the IP address back to Nicholas Go to John's Big Bend address. Police would arrive, and after a short standoff, Gypsy would walk out first. Keep in mind, nobody knows that she can walk at this point and Nicholas would be taken into custody. The police were unsure of Gypsy's involvement in the crime as to whether she was a victim or a culprit. That would be put to rest pretty quickly. Okay, good morning. Uh, I want to specify at the beginning of this press conference that this, this is an ongoing investigation. And I want to start off with saying things are not always as they appear. Both Facebook postings were authored by Gypsy. The prosecutor has filed charges this morning for first-degree murder. This is a tragic, tragic event surrounded by mystery and public deception. Now, while Gypsy tried to deny any involvement or even knowledge of what happened to her mother... Did you kill your mom? No, no, sir. Did you help? No, sir. Nicholas kill your mom? No, sir. Did you have knowledge that Nicholas was going to kill your mom yes, before he did it? Yes, sir. Okay. Sit tight for me, okay? Well, her counterpart, Nicholas, went a completely different route. Did Gypsy know that you were going to kill her mother? Uh, honestly, she asked me to. Okay. Investigators had presented her with plenty of evidence that completely discredited any of her claims, and ultimately Gypsy would come clean as to her involvement in her mother's murder. In July of 2015, Gypsy accepted a plea deal for second-degree murder and would be sentenced to 10 years in prison. She's to be sentenced to 10 years in the Missouri Department of Corrections. She'll have to do 85% of her sentence before she's eligible for uh, parole. While in prison, she actually got engaged with a pen pal that started writing her after seeing a documentary about her case. It appears that Gypsy will have a chance to live out the rest of her life in some sort of normalcy after she's released. And after a few delays for mental health evaluations, in February of 2019, Nicholas Godijon would be found guilty of first-degree murder. Now, because of the very bizarre situation and the clear severe child abuse that caused all of this, the prosecution opted not to go for the death penalty. Go to John would be sentenced to life in prison. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my channel, there's some great links below. The best thing you can do is like and subscribe. We will see you next time.